This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This part of the syllabus is going to go through there and look at how economic changes can have an overall impact on your business. So the first example that we'll see is looking at how economic changes with regards to inflation and also interest rates can have an overall impact on your level of profitability. And then what we'll begin to do is start to look at as well how changes in exchange rates can also impact your business. And a lot of this is very relevant in the current economic climate if you think about what happened in 2016, whereby the United Kingdom uh, voted to leave the EU. And also there was the election of the current US president. OK, both of those have had an impact on the economy. Obviously, some things have been positive. Uh, some things have been negative. Uh, let's not go into them in any detail. I don't want to get political about it. OK, you can think about that away from these lectures. Uh, what we're going to focus on is how those economic changes make a difference that you need to consider when you're setting your objectives. OK, uh, and as I said, we're looking at interest rates moving up and down exchange rates moving favourably or unfavourably and that will obviously depend whether you're importing or exporting your goods and then also as well looking at inflation because as inflation goes up it erodes the purchasing power of money uh, maybe your consumers have less money to spend and if they have less money to spend then the likelihood is that your sales will go down okay uh, so let's go through that and have a look at that uh, so the first one is an overall encompassing example. I say encompassing, it doesn't talk about exchange rates. Uh, we'll leave that until the next section. Uh, and it wants us to go through there and it says as a requirement, calculate the expected earnings for next year and also the change in the earnings. Uh, so from what they were to what they will be in the future adjusting for the predicted changes in the economy again these are predictions uh, and unless you are a genius economist uh, then you know things will go through and change your predictions will not stand firm but we don't need to worry about that so what we've got here is we've got a statement of profit or loss for the most recent financial year i think the company there is called wiggins so continuing with the cycling theme if you so wish uh, and you can see there revenues operating costs operating profit a bit of interest bit of tax to give you those those current year earnings of 43.8 million dollars okay uh, the company is concerned about the predicted changes in the economy okay uh, it's forecast that sales will fall by 15 percent okay uh, so what's going to happen there is that our sales are currently 134.2 million if they are going to fall by 15 percent then we can multiply that by 0.85 can't we okay that would be equivalent to a fall of 15 percent does that give you 114.1 million if you tap that onto your calculator why might sales fall uh could be that maybe there's an increase in interest rates i don't know you know uh, oh, sorry a, a reduction uh, an increase in your interest rates it might make more borrowings more expensive for the consumer so mortgages rates would go up and therefore they'd have less money to spend on uh, purchasing other goods uh, it could be that inflation has risen as inflation goes up people have less money to spend as well because they're having to spend more money on increased utilities bills okay gas electricity water uh, so that's caused our, our sales to fall uh, likewise, it says due to increased competition from overseas. So again, that's a big issue currently, isn't it? Uh, the operating costs will rise uh, by 5%. So your goods are now more expensive. And if they increase by 5%, they will grow to 1.05 of their current total, giving me, is it $71 million? So my current operating profit there was 66.6 .6. uh, that falls to 43.1 okay uh, then what we've got it says there's a fall in the interest rates okay so interest rates have fallen to five percent on the hundred million so does that give me five million which goes through there and gives me is it then pbt of 38.1 million 
uh, and the tax rate will fall to 22%. So the, the government here has tried to help the economy, tried to help businesses uh, by reducing the tax rate because the, the economy isn't doing so well with regards to, to falling sales, rising costs. Okay, Again, a lot of that uh, can be seen in the world as we currently operate. Uh, so 22% of the 38.1, no messing about for any craziness uh, in terms of capital allowances and depreciation. I think that there is 8.4. Okay, let's just double check. 38.1, 22% of that is 8.4. Okay, uh, so that gives me there my earnings. Is it of 29.7 million? So there has been a fall, hasn't there? Uh, is it from 43.8 to 29.7? Okay, uh, so my percentage fall uh, is there as 43.8 down to 29.7. Uh, the original earnings were there, was it as 43.8, isn't it? So I think that is a fall of 32.2% in terms of my overall level of profitability, okay? Which when you think that your sales had fallen by 15, costs had ridden by five, you know, okay, that wasn't good for your operating profitability, but you would hope that maybe due to the reduction in the interest rates and the reduction in tax from 25 down to 22%, that might have offset things a little bit and it hasn't, has it? Okay, there's still been a considerable fall in your earnings by 32.2%. Okay, uh, so that does sort of test two parts of the syllabus as well. It's not just testing, uh, if you like, your, your knowledge of ratios, because we can, you know, think in there about the percentage fall in ratios or the percentage fall in earnings, I should say, as being a ratio or should I say a growth trend, uh, but also test your ability to predict the future. Okay, and taking a current set of financial statements and making adjustments to show what it will be in a year's time, okay? Uh, so that's going through there and looking at your economic changes, looking there a little bit at interest and inflation before we then pick it up a little bit further, okay? Uh, so let's go through there and have a look at the impact uh, that you have, is it on your foreign exchange rates, okay? Uh, and what this goes through and starts to look at is uh, what's referred to as purchasing power parity and interest rate parity, okay? Uh, because ignoring any impact that the, the, the government have on, on interest and inflation, what should happen in an ideal world is that whether you buy or sell goods in your country or another country, uh, the effects of changes in interest and changes in inflation should cancel each other out so that regardless of the level of changes, the, the price of the goods will change so that it is no cheaper to buy or sell goods at home than what it is domestically. So sorry, I should say overseas. OK, uh, so what we begin to start to talk about uh, is we start to go through there and talk about is it strengthening of currencies? And is it your weakening of currencies? OK, uh, a strengthening of a currency is whereby you get more overseas currency for your domestic currency. So let's just say we had, was it an exchange rate of 1.1 euro to the pound? OK, uh, the pound would strengthen if it went to 1.2 euros to the pound because we are getting more euros for my home currency, okay? Uh, or if you like, your base currency, the figure that is quoted to one, okay? Uh, and the strengthening of a currency is beneficial to your importers of goods in a foreign currency, okay? Uh, because if you are buying goods in a foreign currency, so if you are a UK importer of goods and you are buying them in an overseas currency, then it's cheaper to buy those goods, isn't it? Because you get more overseas currency, more euros per pound. So it's a lot cheaper to buy, isn't it? OK, just think about it. If you bought a million euros of goods previously, it was 1.1 euros to the pound. Divide a million by 1.1. What do you do? 1 million divided by 1.1. 
that's £909,000 it would cost to buy. But if the pound strengthened against the euro, did we say to 1.2 euros to the pound? So if I did the same 1 million euros divided by the 1.2, it would now cost me £833,000 to buy those goods. Okay, so a strengthening of a currency is beneficial if you are importing your goods, okay, uh, in a foreign currency. Uh, a weakening is the opposite way around. So when one currency strengthens, that means the other currency has to weaken, doesn't it? So in our example of going, was it from 1.1 euro to the pound to 1.2 euro to the pound, the pound had strengthened. If that's the case, then the euro has weakened, okay? And that wouldn't be good to your importers of goods because the goods will be more expensive, okay? So we said previously it was 1.1 euros to the pound. Uh, and therefore, if the currency weakened, so if your pound sterling weakened uh, to say one to one, it has happened in recent times, hasn't it? Uh, it's even got worse than that. Uh, but let's not go there. Uh, so if it went to one euro to the pound, then if I was buying the goods of a million euros, it would now cost me a million euros, whereby when it was 1.1 euros, to the pound it would have cost me was it nine hundred and nine thousand pounds so it, it gets quite tricky doesn't it to, to think about but just have an awareness of the strengthening and weakening of a currency I, I tend not to use that too much uh just be aware of it in objective test questions i prefer to think about the, the currency moving in your favor or, or moving against you okay but there we go uh but the main thing that you've got there is that when we're looking at the movements a lot of it is impact by, by supply and demand okay uh and that supply and demand where does that come? Come from inflation, come from change in interest, and also any economic and political prospects. But from an exam perspective, we're not going to we're not going to think about economic and political prospects. It's not an economics exam, and it is not a political exam. Okay, you can debate politics as much as you so wish. Okay, what we're going to look at is how the buying and the selling of goods is impacted by inflation and interest. And to go through and start things off, I'm just going to go through that. And if I can squeeze it in, just a little illustration uh, of what we've got uh, to show how we can then work the subsequent example. So let's just say, uh, let's look at what happens today. Uh, and we've got goods in the UK. So let's just say it's a pair of branded trainers, shall we? OK. And in the UK, those branded trainers cost you £100. Okay, uh, to buy an equivalent pair of trainers in the US, the same branded trainers, if they are there at $120, okay, if they are the same branded trainers, there should be parity uh, across those boundaries, shouldn't there? Okay, so in order for that to work, so that you're not getting your trainers cheaper in the US than what you are in the UK, then I think that your exchange rate is $1.2 to the pound, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, 120 divided by 100 is 1.2, isn't it? Now, let's just say that, that both the US and UK economies are subject to inflation, aren't they? Okay. Now, what you've got there is in the UK, let's just say the inflation rate is 5%. And in the US, it's there as 3%. Okay. So what then happens to the price of your branded trainers? I'm not going to say the name of the brand because I wouldn't get paid for it. Okay. Maybe if I mentioned a brand, I might go through there and get a free pair of trainers in the post. But uh, it's unlikely to happen. So we'll just keep with branded trainers, shall we? Uh, so in one year, that means that those branded trainers will cost £105, isn't it? OK. Uh, and what you've got there in the UK, you have a higher rate of inflation. Now, if you have a higher rate of inflation, uh, you would expect your currency to weaken, wouldn't we? Uh, because if you've got a higher rate of inflation, uh, then that's eroding the purchasing power of your money, isn't it? OK. And uh, If it's eroding the purchasing power of money, nobody would particularly want to buy your currency. And if people don't want to buy it, prices fall. Uh, and we talk about falls in prices in terms of currency as a weakening of your currency. Okay. 
Uh, so we would expect there to be a weakening of the pound. Is that the case? Well, in the US, ignoring any political factors or any influence of the government, uh, the price of those branded trainers would rise to $123.6, wouldn't it? Okay, taking your 120 and increasing it by the inflation of 3%. Well, if that's now the case, has there been a weakening of the currency? Remember, we're trying to maintain parity. So what you've got there, if you do 123.6 divided by, is it the 105? Does that go through there and give you $1.177 to the pound? Okay, compared to it previously was. 1.2 dollars to the pound so there has been a weakening of the pound hasn't it we're getting less overseas currency less dollars for my pound and we would expect there to be a weakening of the currency because the inflation is higher in the uk if you think about it from a us perspective uh, the inflation is lower so you would expect there to be a strengthening of the us currency and if you were to work it out not dollars to pounds but pounds to dollars you would find that for every dollar you are now getting more pounds sterling okay so what we need to be able to go through and do from an exam perspective is to be able to appreciate what we've just spoken about there but also we need to be able to predict that future exchange rate and the easiest way to go through and do it is to go through there and say that my my future rate or your forward rate is equal to your current rate multiplied by one plus is it the the overseas currency uh, divided by one plus is it the I'll refer to it as the base or the term currency the base or the term currency is always the figure that is quoted to one okay uh, so here it's the pound sterling that is quoted to one so therefore that will be the figure on the bottom and that does work because what you've got there is that if you take is it 1.2 which is the current exchange rate to one multiplied by is it 1.03 so remember three percent is 0 0.03 divided by 1.05 uh, if you tap that into your calculator, 1.2 times 1.03 divided by 1.05 is 1.177. Okay, so make sure that you remember that formula there because what goes through and happens is that we look at it with regards to inflation and then the same goes through there and happens with regard to interest. Okay, uh, so let's go through that. Uh, and have a look at the example see what we've got okay uh, so what we've got there is it talks about purchasing power parity purchasing power parity talks about infl inflation uh, like we went through and did there didn't we in terms of buying our pair of trainers to make sure that there is parity across borders obviously there might not be parity as there are other external influences okay but this is all very theoretical uh, so it says that an item currently costs 100 pound in the uk uh, the current exchange rate is $1.50 to the pound. Okay, just be careful how that's quoted uh, when it's there dollars per pound, dollars slash pounds. And then the number that is saying how many of the first quoted currency dollars there is per each base currency per one of the following currency. Okay, of the second currency. Be careful. It's probably something that you're not so used to. Uh, rate of inflation of 2% per annum in the UK and 4% per annum in the US. Okay. Uh, it says, A, calculate the price of the item in one year's time in the UK and the US. So that's going through that. I'm getting you to work out this bit, isn't it? That's part A. Okay. Uh, and then in part B, it says, as a result, calculate the exchange rate. Well, that's going through that. And doing part B. So why don't we get you involved? Why don't you stop the video? You must have had enough of me already. We're only in chapter one. Uh, and work through that example yourself. Have a go yourself. Stop the video. See how you get on. And then once you've done it, restart the video. And we will recommence. Okay.
very best of luck.